Alright, so this is the OpenGL C++ program um, <clears throat> that I've been working on, still working on. Uh, I changed quite a bit of things. Um, I had, I actually made some videos and I had to delete some of those videos because they had some code in it that just wasn't, <clears throat> wasn't right. Um, the part that wasn't right was, uh, well, how is looping through um, the uh, ver uh, the vertex arrays? Uh, every time I loop through, I should drop it. Uh, so I bind the vertex array, I draw it, I release it, and then I release the shader that I was using for that vertex array. That <clears throat> seems to be the proper way to do it. Uh, and it makes sense too because you're binding a vertex array. You don't want to just bind another vertex array over that vertex array. You want to drop the vertex array that you're currently using, unuse the shape, uh, uh, the whatever you're using as far as shaders, and then bind the next one, use the shader, so on and so forth. And that works really well. Um, I have multiple shaders now that I, that I can use. Um, uh, and I have a, a, sh a texture shader, color shader, and uh, a light shader. Each one I use for different things. Um, I'm not sure, like, I think there's probably a better way, like, you can make, like, a vertex shader and then make, like, a texture shader or something like that. But I I think, like, uh, I mean, this works. I mean, if there's any other... Uh, ways of making shaders. I mean, suggestions, I'm always up for those. Um, anyways, I what I do there is I just, uh, I actually make uh, the GL, GLSL program uh, equal to whatever shader I currently have. So I have multiple shaders, I can add them in here. Like if I add another one, I could just add the, another shader and it'll resize the the array. Uh, of my shader uh, structure. So my structure will hold, it's essentially an array of, of, of shaders. And um, you have, I'd have to define the, uh, the shader when I am uh, creating it. So right here, I would say my compile, uh, compile the shader color shader and then I'd give it where the vertex and the frag are um, the vert and the frag files and then whenever I add an attribute or link a shader I have to I have to tell the the program or the function you know I'm linking the I, I want to add an attribute to the color shader and then I want to link it now I want to go to the texture shader and so on and so forth these are just ones and zeros uh, one so zero one two three four well not just ones and zeros. Well, yeah, they are ones and zeros, but anyways, it goes, it, it's through my enum. So, um, but this is an easier way to tell what is what, uh, as far as, uh, what I'm linking rather than just putting one and zero and two and three and four and five, and then trying to figure out, oh, which one was that again? <laughs> you know? So I figured that's, this is a good way to do it. Um, I was thinking of doing like a batch, um, a batch uniform location so I would send a batch of information to uh, the function and it would just add all those uh, give me get back a an array of all those uh, locations but um, maybe even make a map of it or something like that and I can use it later but eh, it works for now um, I'll come up with something later um, and uh, everything works correctly it works really good um, right now I have uh, I'm gonna create another f uh, probably CPP or make it in the mesh file but right now uh, what I have is um, I create uh, different things uh, for the different shaders uh, like for the color shader the, the purpose of having you know these different shaders is there's different uniform locations and things I have to do in each shader and if I just want to load a line I obviously I don't want a texture um, I don't want you know uh, 
I don't want to texture uh, coordinates. I don't want to do multiple things to it. Maybe I just want to have a color, you know. And if I if I just use one shader, I would have to do a whole bunch of if loops and put IDs in, and it just gets messy. So split up the shaders and it makes it easier. And right now I have uh, let's see. Um, I was just testing uh, if everything works correctly. So I have a color shader, light shader. Uh, I have a couple lights in there. I'm I'm working on lights right now, but I'm not in. Mm, I'm I'm kind of confused on whether or not the shader uh, or the texture gets the the light uh, shader or the light or the, well the the texture gets all these light diffuse ambience materials and I mean that makes sense for a texture right because materials and and light and uh, how how it's affecting the object and then the light shader would just be like the light but I'm not entirely sure like how to project the light uh, like I all I know is to give it a position and then I use that light position as um, a light towards whatever object that I'm currently uh, maybe uh, putting a light on. So um, this is what it <clears throat> turns out to be. Uh, let's see. So right now I have it like looping through um, uh, the ambient and diffuse colors. So it's like yeah, there's the specular lighting and it goes away once it goes completely black uh, and that's because I'm looping through diffuse and uh, everything but what, what's really weird is I was I was following this uh, this guide on how to do this um, because I'm not I'm pretty new with lights and I need you know help with lights and I don't have a book um, which I should get um, is the uh, when I go into the shader uh, let's see where's shader. So shader. Oops, no. So those are my textures. I go into the shader, and then I'll go into my frag. And so I'm doing. Um, cancel that for now. So I'm doing all the calculations uh, for the. Uh, color or the light in the texture uh, shader and then I'm grabbing the position of my light shader which just has you know a color of one or whatever color I set I could set a different color but technically it usually has a color of one but what I'm not entirely sure of is whether or not like I would have to add um, the the ambient diffuse and specular to the light but I don't think that I don't think that's correct because then I mean it feels like uh, then everything would be occurring on the light rather than on the object in which the light is pointing or close to and it's it's really strange like I'm not entirely sure I got it uh, you know 100% correct I'm still working on that but um what I can do with uh, with all this uh, right now is I have a couple things set up uh, where I can uh, draw like uh, just a regular line or box I could define something and I'll probably make a program or a CPP file that uh, that'll make uh, certain objects that I want like simple objects or I can you know import them from blender or something like that but this is real this is real simple stuff so I guess it doesn't really need blender for this so if I wanted to create a line kind of like what I have um, in between these uh, sectors right here so if I just wanted to create a line you know obviously I don't need a huge program to do that I just need two points so I can just define those points and then redefine them and do whatever I want with them um, and place them in certain areas wherever I may be going or you know for there's a lot of purposes for those you know normal uh, uh, objects that aren't aren't uh, you know 
textured and so on and so forth. Maybe to just have a color like this guy. This guy's using the color shader. This is the light shader. Or this is the using the light shader file. And this is using the texture shader file. Now, there's um, an interesting thing that happens when I follow this guide. Um, he goes into talking about making the light direction the negative light direction. But when I do that, uh, and I change that to a negative light direction. Watch what happens to this. So it, there's no specular lighting now. It's it's not there. It's non-existent, right? But once I go inside inside the cube, now it's specular, which is really weird. I think that might have something to do with the texture. I'm not entirely sure because um, uh, when I load, say I load my little chair that I have here. Um, I think we'll load the chair. Yeah, I think it it may work for the chair. Yeah, see it has the specular lighting on the outside now. So I think it may have something to do with the object itself. But even when you go into the object, it still has the specular lighting inside the object, which is really strange. Um, um, I'm not entirely sure why it does that. But if I add a negative light direction when I calculate the diffuse, then uh, it seems to work correctly, which is really odd. Well, yeah. Anyways, that's um, something I'm working on right now, um, is lighting. I mean, I'm trying to get the light, playing around with light and seeing where I can get with it. Um, now I'm at a position where I can go back. I, ha I essentially re-gutted everything in my code. I uh, you know, took everything in the Genesis file and put it into a mesh file. Um, I'll probably split up the mesh file or something like that. I don't know. I might do this. I'm not entirely sure. I took my vertex uh, file. That, well, the, the, the file for the vertex is just meant to hold information, right? I'm not actually running that vertex. Uh, the only vertex data I'm running through is, uh, OpenGL is the um, combined vertice data. So um, instead of uh, putting a struct inside here, I actually calculate the uh, combined vertices and throw them in here. So uh, if I wanted to change something, I would have to throw it into a redraw program that would loop through and um, change like whatever I want and then recombine the um, recombine the float, uh, GL um, uh, float array data, which is uh, this guy right here. So all this data. So GL float data. And that GL float data is used uh, to uh, combine like whatever I want as far as, you know, if I wanted normals, uh, position, normals, texture, color, everything goes in that. And then I go ahead and draw arrays uh, in the loop. So I can, uh, one cool thing is that I can copy uh, certain uh, arrays. So if I wanted to copy, this is another thing, like I, if I wanted to copy a specific array and I didn't know what array that was, I was thinking about trying to make some sort of like list or map or something like that, that defines, okay, well, this object is, you know, a cube and it has the array zero. So I could like somehow figure that out um, by, uh, I'm not entirely sure how to do it, but I know there's a better way to do it than just passing an array um, because sometimes you might, you know, if you have more than you have a thousand objects, you don't know which array you're looking at. Um, but I guess, you know, if you wanted to really do something, it would, it would be implementing, you know, a picker. So you'd pick that object in the world and it would automatically se uh, select that array based on its position or something like that. So this, this is just for like, I guess, testing. So um, say we wanted to copy the the object um, for the chair, I think, yeah, it was the chair side, the chair. 
and I'll put it at six. And so I just copied the chair. And so it put, should put another chair. I have it putting me into like a sector that's way away from all the objects. So I can copy, now I've got two chairs. So it's like, a, copies the, the array uh, data and then puts that object wherever you want it. So if I wanted to say click on an object, it would highlight. Uh, and then I would have some kind of option to copy and then it will copy that and then draw it to like my mouse and I can move it around and place it anywhere I want. But yeah, that's uh, just something I'm working on. Um, more updates in the future. Um, so this is all about really like shaders and lighting and uh, you know, just restructuring in general. Anyways, have a good one.